Hello, I am Philippe Duchateau, Chief Scientific Officer at Selectis, and I welcome you to the episode 4. In this episode, our experts will present to you the technology we have developed over the 21 years of life of Selectis. This episode is entitled, It Takes More Than One Tool to Make a Car. I have to say it's a little joke, a little mockery, referring to previous episodes that describe to you how gene editing could improve the CAR T-cell therapy. So, more seriously, it is also mainly because although gene editing technology is certainly extremely important, it is not sufficient by itself when you want to bring a gene editing product from bench to bed. And at Selectis, we realized that very early on. And we built over the year a one-stop shop strategy for next generation cell and gene therapy. There are three main parameters to master in order to be successful. When you want to modify a gene, either inactivate, repair or replace, you need first to design a nucleus. There are plenty of websites that can help you on that. It may look easy, however, you need a nucleus which is efficient, precise, and safe. Efficient, this means it's capable to induce double strand break within the genome. Precise, meaning as close as possible of your site of interest. And safe, you want to avoid any unintended gene editing modification. And this is much more difficult to achieve. And unfortunately, there are no apps on Google that to help you on that. And you will see in this episode how Selectis has developed a machine learning approach using our proprietary database to be able to find this magic needle in the stack. Having the nucleus, you now have to bring it into the nucleus. This is the vectorization step. Once again, there are several companies out there that can help you and provide you some so with some solution, but it may be difficult to adapt it and to optimize it for your own purposes. At Selectis, we have developed our own electroporation system that enables us to develop our product from innovation up to large-scale GMP manufacturing. Our electroporation system will be presented to you today. Last but not least, you need also to be able to design the best gene editing strategy to achieve your goal. For that, there is no tool on the web. No scene can replace experience in gene editing. And I remind you that Selectis has been founded in 1999 as a gene editing company. Gene editing has been our root, our DNA for the past 21 years. Now it's true that if you plan to stay at the research level, you may not need such a high quality tools. But if you want to bring your product to the clinic, not only you will need efficient and safe tool, but you have also to add an extra layer of difficulty. I mean by that, that you have to move your product from the lab to the GMP manufacturing. You will need to have access to GMP raw material and GMP manufacturing facility. Most of the company rely on external resources for that, but it can quickly become a major issue in your product development strategy. It is why Selectis has built its own capacity. And I believe that Selectis is the only gene editing company that offers such a capability. We concentrate at the same place, all it takes to create, develop, and manufacture a gene editing product. Having said that, I will now leave you with our expert who will explain you why Selectis is a leading gene editing company and much more. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Alexandre Juira, VP Genetics at Selectis. And today I will drive you through our journey focused on gene editing technologies. At Selectis, we are pioneer in gene editing with more than 21 years of experience in this field. Starting so long ago allowed us to use and benchmark most of the current technologies. We started in 2000 with a mega nuclease and then in 2010 with the talent technology, followed quickly by variation of this tal backbone like compact talent and mega tal that are monomic version of a talent. We also have years of expertise with CRISPR gene editing. But since 2010, we have really focused our attention on the talent technology for ex vivo gene editing. To master such complex molecular tools, we have to accumulate an amazing body of information and of experience. 
Today, all this knowledge is fully integrated into our gene editing platform. Working on this molecular tool and their applications allowed us to create a very strong patent portfolio covering 124 patent families for which 278 patents were granted and we still have 316 more to come. This patent portfolio not only cover different nuclease tools like Talon, CRISPR and so on, but also large number of gene editing applications. This portfolio will enable selectees to have exclusive rights in our current fields of activities until 2034, 2035 for the nucleus tool and up to 2038 for their applications. Today, our flagship gene editing technology is the Talon. A Talon is a molecular scissor that is used to create a double strand break in the DNA at a very defined location. This tool is composed of three different domains. We have the internal domain that is responsible to target the first base of the target sequence. In our case, it's always a T. And this is the only requirement we have to design a talon. We then have the central DNA binding core, which is composed of different repeated models. Each of the model is interacting with one base of the targets. We have a one-to-one -one interaction between models and base of the targets. And the specificity of targeting is given by two amino acids within each model, the so-called RVD, repeat viable D residues. And finally, we have the third part of the talon, the nuclease domain. This nuclease domain is responsible to create a double strand break. To function, the nucleus head needs to demerize. So an active talon is in fact composed of two distinct molecules, the half talon. When the two half talons recognize the targets, they will bring the two nucleus heads in close proximity, the nucleus heads will demerize and then create the double strand break. What is happening after is dependent on the choice of the DNA repair mechanism by the cell. At this point, not all nucleases are equivalent, but unlike other molecular tools, the cleavage by a talon presented optimal characteristic for a very broad scope of application, including using homologous recombination. To characterize this nucleus, we are using three main concepts. The precision, which is our capacity to target as close as possible to the desired sites. And to better understand these parameters, we can maybe use an analogy with editing in book. The content of the book represents the genome. If there is a typo in a word, and this typo impacts our understanding of the world or of the sentence, then we might want to change it. With some correction tools, some nuclease, for example, you might be able to target the chapter or the paragraph containing the words or the typo. In this case, the correction might be challenging and maybe efficiency might be low because we are targeting far away from the typo. With other tools, we might be able to target precisely the words or even better, the typo itself. Then the correction will be way easier. This is the case of the talent technology, targeting the position where the modification is required. Then, second characteristic is the activity, is our capacity to introduce efficiently a double strand break in the genome. And this parameter is tightly linked with our ability to vectorize the nuclease into the target cell. The third parameter is a specificity. It's our capacity to avoid any unintended genetic modifications. We want to target a short sequence, a few dozen base pair, and spare the remaining billion base pair of the whole genome. If now we represent the three parameters in a 3D model, each blue dot represents a potential nuclease. Some nuclease will be very active, maybe very specific, but target far away from our desired spots. Some will have high specificity, but low activity, and so on and so on. Finding the perfect nucleus for a therapeutic application, meaning at the exact location in the genome, highly active and highly specific, might turn into finding a needle, the green dots in a haystack. If you now pick almost randomly a few dots, what is the chance to find a needle? Very low. At Selectis, we have built efficient strategies to quickly reach the needle. This is our gene editing platform. I will now focus on the first aspect of the gene editing tool, the precision. We are presenting here the number of possible talent per megabase on the entire chromosome 2. We have hundreds 
of thousands of possibility. And this is also true for other chromosomes. You can also appreciate that the, the entire chromosome is targetable with a very high density of talent. If we now go back to our 3D box, because of this very high precision, we can narrow down the, the regions to be targeted to the position where we want to make our modifications. We are almost sure to find enough molecules. We have estimated that the distance between two talent sites will be, in average, below seven base per, which is an amazing precision for such molecular tool. Now moving to the next parameter, the activity. We are now looking here at talent activity on a set of 39 lossy for which are very short sequencing within a gene of interest. We can notice that for all 39 lothi, we are able to identify highly active talent. If we set up the activity threshold to 70% of edits, the success rate is then of 100%. If we increase the threshold to 90%, then we still have a success rate of approximately 90%, which is amazing. I have to add that all this activity were measured in a high throughput format without any optimizations, meaning that we expect this activity profiles to be further improved. Going back to our 3D box, our knowledge of talent design combined with a very efficient validation pipeline allowed us to identify talent candidates with very high activity. And now the third parameter, which is a specificity. This parameter also relates to the safety of gene editing, especially for therapeutic applications. Going after therapeutic application, the use of in silico method to assess the specificity of design nuclease is today not enough. Experimental validation is required. To assess the specificity of ethylens, we are using a genome-wide unbiased in cellular approach, meaning that the off-site identification is taking place in the context of the cell editing process. Our methods a law to robustly identified off-site created, in this case by a model talent, across multiple donors and independent experiments. We further couple the off-site identification platform with strategies that allowed to query and assess the validity, the relevance of this putative off-site in high throughput formats, meaning that we have the capacity to screen and validate hundreds to thousands of sites simultaneously. We are presenting here the location of the highest off-sites found with our model talent. We then took advantage of our capacity to quickly assess not only the activity but also genome-wide the specificity profile of this nuclease to improve the global talent specificity via protein engineering through rational design. We performed a few rounds of protein engineering and ended up with a new talent scaffold that showed when targeting the exact same sequence a very strong improvement in specificity as shown by the elimination of the off-sites that we previously identified. You can also appreciate that we didn't create any new strong off-sites using this backbone. We can then even go deeper in the control of talent specificity. We can take advantage of the two key amino acids present in the different DNA targeting models, the RVDs. To target the four DNA bases, we are using a subset of four RVDs. We use NI to target an A, HG to target a C, NN to target a G, NG to target a T. But nature gave us 20 amino acids, which means 400 combinations of RVDs. We have screens for activity and specificity, all possible RVD combinations. As you can imagine, not all combinations led to inactive molecules, maybe because of folding or impairing DNA protein interaction, but we found that the code could be extended from the usual four RVDs to roughly 200 new models uh, with various specificity. This is, for example, a lot more than what is used for technology using RNA-DNA interactions, where you have the four bases of the RNA targeting the four bases of the DNA. We now have 200 combinations of RVDs to target the four DNA bases. And each of these new models will offer very distinct targeting properties and allowing for unique control and tuning of this specificity. The most obvious use of this extending code is to move talent along the specificity axis toward improved specificity. This would, for example, allow us to exclude off-site targeting. And it is exactly what we did for talent targeting PD-1. 
This talent was highly efficient and ideally located for downstream applications. But unfortunately, we found a low frequency of sites. With other technology, the only option would have been just to discard your molecules and try to find another one, matching the same criteria, the specific location, activity, and then specificity. The chances to find that might be quite low. For the talent technology, we just had to perform a round of re-engineering using these extending codes. And this re-engineering allowed us to suppress the off-site targeting and maintain a very strong activity on site. The targeting specificity were therefore defined by design, not by luck. So altogether, mastering the precision, the activity, and the specificity allowed us to efficiently reach the needle in the haystack. Fully understanding and mastering the talent design also allowed us for very precise editing approaches such as single nucleotide discrimination. In this particular case, we first designed a talent targeting a mutated sequence. Per our design, was inactive when used in cells harboring the wild type sequence. But when we tested this talent in cells harboring the mutation, we were able to detect a strong activity. And the only difference between the two sequences is a single base pair difference. We can also do the opposite, design a talent targeting the wild type sequence. This talent will not be active in cells having the mutations, but highly active in the wild type cells. One more time, the only same difference, a single base difference. Meaning that we are now reaching the single nucleotide resolution. I will now move from the talent as a molecular tool to possible consideration for gene editing applications. The use of designer nuclease allows for a large variety of possible applications, starting from gene knockout to gene insertions, but also for very subtle combination of these different approaches. The final applications will define the best strategy to use, but some strategies will only be possible if your targeting precision is good enough. In addition to the nuclease molecular tool, because of its modularity, the TAL backbone represents a great and versatile platform for additional genetic engineering tools, including, for example, transactivators and repressors. For now, I would like to present another class of gene editing tools based on TAL scaffolds, the base editors. When for talents we are using a cut or cut and paste approach to modify the genome of a cell, the base editors are more like a correction tool. A base editor will generate a precise point modification in a genomic DNA without creating a double strand break. This technology, the base editing, will unfortunately allow only to go after subsets of possible application with a talent, with a nucleases. And this is the case for any base editing platform. We can mainly remove a function from a cell or correct a function in a cell. The TAL base editors are built on the same scaffold as for the talent. We have the N terminal domain that is targeting the first base of the target, a T. We have the central DNA binding core, which is composed of the models with the same two uh, amino acids, uh, the RVDs. And then we replace the nuclease heads by a deaminase. This molecule will still function as an heterodimer and will allow for modification of a C to a T. These base editors benefit from the advantage of the TAL backbone and can present very high level of activity, but also very good specificity within the editing window. I will now conclude by presenting an overview of our gene editing platform. Everything starts with a cell engineering project and a genomic sequence. Talon are then designed to target this genomic sequence within minutes. These talents are assembled in less than a day in high throughput formats. And the mRNA encoding these talents are then produced in less than a week. We are now ready for the validation process in primary cells. Within a month, we have activity and specificity profiles and lead talent can be identified for any desired applications. We then can combine this activity and specificity data sets with other information such as epigenetic context. This allows us to constantly train and improve our design algorithm using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Our design algorithm is then ready to be used for the next project.
This is our gene editing platform. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, I'm David Sourdive. I'm one of the co-founders of Selectus, where I run strategic initiatives. I will share with you today some aspects of our cell engineering platform. Selectus is bringing a revolution to the field of cell therapy. To foster the transformative power of genome engineering, we built an industrial platform to make designer smart cells for therapeutic applications. Through genome design, we program cells to execute predefined scenarios once infused into patients. The platform has the strategic capability to operate on multiple cell types, such as T-cells or stem cells. Also, most importantly, it allows fast product versioning, which is key to incremental development, where a product design is tested in humans, then adjusted, tested again, adjusted, and so forth, with rapid iterations. It's a powerful approach to develop these sophisticated therapies for complex indications, such as solid tumors, for example. Genome engineering pertains to precisely rewrite the genome in living cells. It relies on a brief DNA surgery with long-lasting effects performed in masses of primary cells. The genetic rewriting is done by gene editing tools that need to be introduced into the cells, and that may come in various formats, such as messenger RNA, DNA, proteins, vectors, or combinations thereof. Yet delivery or vectorization of these macromolecules has often been a limiting factor for gene therapies over the past decades. So a focus of Selective Smart Cell Industrial Platform was to ensure high and robust yields, allowing clinical and commercial deployment, and to support treating large numbers of patients. To best address this challenge, Selectus chose to deliver its genome engineering tools with electroporation, the most versatile approach, accommodating just about any type of macromolecule, operating on practically any cell type, and that is also particularly robust and scalable. In essence, cells are mixed with the macromolecules in suspension and placed between electrodes. They are then subject to high voltage electric pulses that open pores in the cell membrane, followed by low voltage electric pulses that drag the macromolecules into the cells. This entire operation takes about 20 milliseconds and it takes a few minutes for the cells to close the open pores. Back in 2010, Selectus acquired the Cytopulse technologies and since then we have been building upon them a comprehensive electroporation platform. Selectus chose to design, make and control electroporation technologies from end to end staying both agile with its rapid deployment for each case and completely autonomous on this strategic capability. Selectus designs and makes electroporation devices that deliver precise sequences of electric pulses to cell suspensions. We also develop and make our own chemical buffers that control electrophysiological conditions during the electroporation. Selectus also masters electrical waveform design for optimal delivery. The end-to-end -end control provided by this industrial platform allows rapid buffer and waveform optimization for each cell and payload type and prop deployment for therapeutic application. As the first element of the platform, Selectis conceived and built the Pulse Agile electric generator. This device delivers precise and flexibly adjustable pulses, allowing access to vast number of waveform combinations for any applications. With its focus on yield, Selectis also design electroporation chambers accommodating large cell numbers. As an illustration, double gene editing is achieved in nearly 96% of about 1 billion T cells in a single electroporation, the system providing both robust high yields and batch to batch consistency. As a third pillar in the platform, Selectus designs and makes electroporation buffers for each application. Vast chemical spaces are screened and formula are optimized for the three main parameters of interest to cell therapies. Yield, cell viability or fitness, and of course genome engineering efficacy. Selectus also leverages its GMP capability to make its buffers under GMP to be used for cell therapy manufacturing. As an example, talent delivery to hemopoietic stem cells was optimized, leading to an eightfold increase in relative yield 
and nearly 80% in double allele gene edited cells. The buffer was first optimized for yield, cell viability and fitness. Then the waveform was adapted to the particular cell type and payload prior to a final scale-up that confirmed the optimization achieved. At the 100 million cell scale, with high yields and cell fitness, the platform ensures over 98% transfection and close to 80% double allelic gene editing efficacies in this particular cell type. To treat many patients with a cell therapy may also require addressing larger cell numbers. So for its industrial smart cell platform, Selectus developed the gene engine to allow robustly engineering hundreds of billions of cells in a GMP process to support clinical and commercial deployments. The Gene Engine is a device designed and built by Selectus to expand yield while maintaining all the versatility of electroporation. It brings further scalability and the robustness of a closed system. It is based on repeated, consistent and controlled electroporation rounds performed in a single chamber within a short time. The Gene Engine is connected to the Pulse Agile generator and driven from its control panel. It relies on easily attachable single-use tubing sets. Chosen volumes of the cell mixed with the payload are sequentially injected into the chamber where the electroporation takes place before being collected for the next step of processing. As an example for T-cells, the gene engine has the capacity to electroporate more than 100 billion cells in less than 90 minutes total time. Selectus homegrown and end-to-end -end control electroporation technologies provide a means to deliver powerful gene editing tools in a very wide range of applications. This smart cell platform is the result of a continuous development by Selectus, from early days to highly sophisticated DNA modification tools, and from simpler genome engineering to more advanced genome design at industrial scale for clinical and commercial deployment. As a summary, its technological basis puts Selectus in a rather unique position in the field, allowing a fast transition from a genomic concept to the bedside and rapid product versioning. It takes Selectus a short time to design, optimize, and even manufacture therapeutic talent, the most precise, specific, and highly active gene editing tools. And with an end-to-end -end control industrial vectorization platform, both versatile and allowing clinical and commercial deployment, Selectus is now bringing the smart cell revolution to the field of cell therapy. Thank you. We are now reaching the end of this episode dedicated to the gene editing technologies. We hope you enjoyed it and please stay with us for the Q&A. Nobody would tell you what heal is. You have to come and see it for yourself. Hi, good morning everyone, or good afternoon for those in Europe. Um, welcome back to another episode and Q&A for the Selectus Innovation Days. Today, episode four. Again, my name is Simon Harness. I'm the Chief Investment Officer at Selectus, and I'll be hosting this uh, Q&A session. You can submit questions through the uh, field in the live webcast, so feel free to submit questions. We have a series of our top scientists here on the table, and uh, today's subject is gene editing and electroporation and the amazing technologies that Selectus has developed in-house to become more efficient at its processes. So there is a lot of questions coming in. Um, one of the main themes that we're highlighting today is base editing. 
And uh, maybe as a summary of a few questions to start, um, this is for Alex uh, Julien. Um, how does our base editor technology compare technically to someone that uses CRISPR, such as, for example, Beam Therapeutics? Okay, uh, thank you, Simon. I'm Alexandre Gira, VP Gene Editing at, at Selectis. Um, so so we, we develop a new base editing technology that is taking advantage of all the knowledge we have accumulated over the past few years on, on the talent technology. This, this base editor is, is really taking advantage of the tile backbone and the precise, very precise editing and very, very precise targeting of, of the genomic uh, DNA. Uh, taking advantage of the efficiency and specificity and also the precision. Um, BEAM, for example, BEAM Therapeutic is using a CRISPR backbone um, to base edit, which is also coming with all the maybe uh, disadvantage of, of, a, of a CRISPR in terms of, of, of specificity of targeting. Um, and, and so uh, knowing and mastering the talent technology, we are able to use this knowledge for development of this base editing through uh, TAL backbone. Thank you, Alex. And maybe just as a follow-up question here, where do you see the main applications of the base editing technology versus like the traditional, so to speak, double-strand break um, that we're employing? So base editing also takes advantage of the fact that we are not creating a double-strand break in the genome when changing this point mutation. This is also kind of limitation of the technology because you can ma mainly remove a function, creating a mutation, or correct the function. You cannot really insert a new function in, in a genome. So we really think that the combination of base editing, editing together with nuclease will allow us for very complex and precise multiplex gene engineering uh, in different cell types. Thank you, Alex. Um, so Pivoting a little bit into the electroporation technology before we go back to the gene editing questions, um, and this may be good questions for Paris or David Sourdiv, um, what are the regulatory requirements for approval of the Pulse Agile gene engine, and where are we in that process? Thank you, Simon, for this question. I am David Sourdiv. Uh, I am a co-founder and executive vice president for strategic initiatives at Selectis. So um, today we deploy the Pulse Agile uh, in GMP manufacturing for our clinical supplies of UCOP products and we can use it broadly for any cell therapy engineering. Uh, the requirements are the same as you would have for any kind of device that would be deployed in such a context. There are parts that are in contact with the product, and that's the electroporation chambers and possibly some tubings. Uh, those have to comply with the classical requirements, leachable, extractable, and so forth, and compatibility with the product. As for the device itself, well, basically it has to be safe, it has to be traceable, it has to be documentable, uh, compliant with uh, uh, regulations pertaining to software, uh, Part 11, for example, and so forth. Uh, those are the main requirements, and those are that those have been implemented early on into the devices, both for U.S. and European and Japanese requirements. Thank you, David. Um, and so also um, as a follow-up question to this, um, from Yigal Nochomovitz at Citigroup, um, do you plan to sell our novel electroporation device to third parties or remain uh, or retain it internally? Oh, thank you for that question. Um, so we do not intend to sell uh, the electroporation technology. Uh, we actually make it accessible and available to our partners in the, in the framework of collaborations that we have with third parties, and otherwise we're using it ourselves. And maybe as a just general follow-up question on our partnering strategy, I think this is important to clarify because there's a few questions here. Maybe Andre, you can talk a little bit high level about you know what is our strategy in terms of partnering any of these technologies versus developing an in-house broad pipeline. Thank you very much, Simon, for the question. And 
Yes, Selectus has a very powerful uh, partnering strategy, and we have a series of partners like ranging from like Survey to Allogene through uh, IOVAN and uh, uh, very recently uh, uh, Cytovia. And uh, of course, all of these partners have access to these type of technologies. It's part of the Selectus gene editing platform. Because you can't edit genes if you cannot access the genes to edit them. It means we bring everything in our platform from A to Z to get the things done. And uh, we can also adapt this platform within the partnering. We're not a device company and we're not supposed to uh, uh, selling devices. This is not the mission of the company. The mission of the company is to develop therapeutic products for unmet medical needs, either through our own discovery platform or through uh, uh, partnerships with the platforms of third-party companies that would be interested. The case of, for example, IPS-derived NK cells with Cytovia is a very good example of this, and we're super excited to partner with them in trying to bring uh, uh, therapies for unmet uh, medical needs. But the goal of Selectus is not, like the business model of Selectus is not making money out from like selling devices. Thank you, Andre. Um, just as a quick follow-up question from Nick Abbott at Wells Fargo, um, does Allogene have access to our Pulse Agile or Gene Engine, the electroporation or the gene editing technologies? So I can take that one. Um, so yes, our partners do have access to our gene delivery and, uh, and uh, electroporation systems. They do have access to the buffers as well. And they, as Andre mentioned, basically it's a turnkey system. And when we provide access to the technology, we are pro provide access to something that is immediately deployable in, um, in the GMP environment for uh, rapid turnaround and rapid manufacturing. Thank you so much, David. Pivoting in a little bit into the scientific aspects of where we go with our pipeline using our technologies, and this is a good question maybe for Philippe Duchateau, our Chief Science Officer. Um, are we expanding our pipeline into monogenic diseases on the one hand um, with our new gene editing technologies, and then also is this a technology that is reserved mainly for ex vivo gene editing applications, or are we also seeing visibility into in vivo gene editing applications, and what is our strategy why we would go for in vivo versus ex vivo or vice versa? Thank you. Thank you, Simon, for this question. So I'm Philippe Duchateau, uh, CSO. Uh, to answer your first question, uh, to answer your first question about uh, the what was it? I forgot. Oh, sorry. What was your first question, Simon? The, fir the first question was about um, the monogenic diseases we could target yeah. with our gene editing okay, technology, uh, and the second was ex vivo versus in vivo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, actually, I have a pretty brief answer to that. Um, I, will, uh, I will say just come and join us tomorrow, and you will see how we are expanding our pipeline outside the oncology. This is a very brief. And uh, I don't want to say more because otherwise people will not join the episode for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of the uh, in vivo the delivery, so today the, the, our internal pipeline are really focused on ex vivo strategy because we want really to uh, milk as much as possible the delivery system that we own and master. But uh, we, we may have some partner that we are working with that are also uh, investigating some uh, in vivo approach for delivering the, the talent. And maybe just as a follow-up question to this, to, to precise this uh, thought process, um, the, how much do you think the in vivo gene editing uh, programs depend on the gene editing technology versus the delivery technology of those gene editing technologies? Philippe. Simon, it's Andre. Maybe I can start by answering this. We strongly believe in in vivo gene editing, and the company is very interested in this. We're not putting this on the side of the table, but we're moving step-wise into this direction. 
This means working first on allogenic cells, that's a CAR-T platform that has been invented by Selectus. Then please join us tomorrow at the HEAL session. You will see what's next. And then uh, in vivo, gene editing is something we're moving into, but uh, someone has to move very widely, and there is a series of indications that can be treated with our current platform while we're working on the innovation side to try to bring in vivo gene editing within the next years, but not in a very short period of time. Yeah, and maybe, maybe I can add some detail on that. I, for sure, the in vivo, we are investigating the in vivo delivery because it will be in the future the next step of the gene editing. But for today, I think the, the more mature technologies for ex vivo application. Thank you. Um, and just a question of um, expansion and commercial viability of these systems. Um, what is our current capacity in terms of throughput, kind of tying back to our episode yesterday with these technologies, and how do you see this expand into the commercial platform? Maybe that's a good question for, for Andre. Okay, so yes, like, of course, everything that we do currently is totally tuned up to go commercial. Everything from A to Z, when we start concepting, uh, like the inception of a product and the way we're going to manufacture it, you've seen, for example, yesterday, the way we've designed our production plant in Raleigh has been thought about going commercial immediately. It's uh, BLA ready today with all the, uh, of course, uh, QC, QA that is put in around this. And of course, when we design, for example, a device such as the gene engine, it is thought from the beginning with the software, with all the CFA parts uh, that are needed to this to go commercial. The idea of Selectus and the objectives we have in our, uh, uh, in our plans is the company is going to put most of these products on the market, and that's the plan of the company. And that's why we talk about this as going from bench to bed. The bed is selected commercializing this and having a worldwide deployment. One of the things we're trying to do also is being able to clone our plants. It means once you have uh, 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 some plants for a uh, uh, production plant, then you can duplicate this somewhere else, for example, in Asia, in Europe, in the United States, in South America, etc. The concept is always on clonability of the plant, one place or another, to be able to make a very rapid deployment worldwide of all the production of these products, if, of course, the, uh, the, the, the performance of the products are there, which we believe will be the case. Thank you, Andre. And another very technical question, and this is maybe a good one for Alex. Um, is there a difference between the talent technology and other gene editing tools in their capacity and efficiency for gene knock-in, and at the same time the capacity to leverage non-homologous end joining versus homologous-directed recombination? Okay, thank you. So, yes, there are different gene editing platforms, gene editing tools like uh, Zinc Finger, CRISPR, and Talon, or Compact Talon, Mega Talon, and, and so on. And the, the difference between non amorous and joining that is used for making knockouts, I'll say most of the platforms can really efficiently create this double strand break. But then when you think about knocking, to introduce a new function in the cell, then the, the ends created by, by the nucleus are, are key. And in, in, in this field, the talent technology is really optimal to go for this kind of application, bringing a new function, bringing a, a new gene in the cells. And so, yes, there is a difference between this platform for Darkin and talent is really superior to others in this case. We also have differences if, if you target different parts of, of, of the genome. Not, genome is not a linear molecule. It can be more compact, more open, and it has been shown that the talent technology is really optimal also to target more, more compact region of, of, the, of, of the DNA, of the genomic DNA, which may really broaden the possible scope of applications. Thank you, Alex. 
We have a question IP from Jack Allen from RW Baird. Um, on the IP platform, do you believe any of the other players in the gene editing space are infringing on your patent estate? And do you have any plans to bring forward disputes or claims? Andre, this is a good question for you, maybe. Well, uh, thank you very much for this question. Thank you, Alan, uh, Jack, for, uh, Jack Allen for this question. However, of course, I'm not going to answer very directly uh, a question like this. Uh, however, w one thing that I would like you to uh, to note is that Selectis has been focusing very much because of the technical performance that has been shown by Alex on the tailing platform that we have. It's extremely precise. You can place the cut exactly where you want it. None of these other technologies can produce this. It is super performant, it can do gene-based uh, editing, it can do gene replacement, gene knock-in, gene knock-out, et cetera. It's very large, but it requires a lot of knowledge to do it. It's super rapid, you can generate the tail in a very short period of time, but if you don't have all this machine learning system that we've been investing on for the past 10 years, you would not be able to make a good tail in. However, what is interesting is that in the others, on the other side, there is, it's very easy to make a CRISPR. You just have to order a guide. So CRISPR, and that's why they got the Nobel Prize, was a very rapid catch fire in all the space of, in the biology space, and everyone's working on it. We've been working on CRISPR. We filed tons of patents on CRISPR that are quite powerful because we cover also the CRISPR used in to knock out to do uh, allergenic T cells, so it's quite powerful. And uh, it's interesting because we have a very good path with our IP on the technologies we think are the best. However, in the other spaces, it's quite cloudy and kind of a minefield. Now, I'm not, I don't know exactly how it's going to unravel at the end, and of course, there is no product commercialized, so like this, uh, this phase is still like a research and development phase. But at the end, I think that the position of Selectus with the IP we've been amassing for the past 21 years uh, has, is putting us in a very interesting position in terms of competitive advantage, I would say. Thank you, Andre. Um, another follow-up question on the gene editing efficiency, and I'm trying to summarize a few questions here. Um, so the questions are around kind of what are the efficiencies needed for uh, a regulatory hurdle or for moving a program into the clinic for kind of go no-go decision making? Um, and maybe Alex, this is a good question for you. Um, or Philippe, uh, feel free to bounce back and forth. Um, you know, what efficiencies should people think of as good efficiencies? Because I know there's a lot of different numbers being thrown around for multiplex editing and base editing, et cetera. What is a, an efficiency for a program and, for example, a CAR-T program that you're comfortable with to bring into the clinic? Maybe, Philippe, you can start and Alex can follow up. Okay, thank you, Simon. So uh, I will say higher is better. I mean, it's just a question of manufacturing. If your efficiency is too low, then you will have to, uh, you have a poor product. So there is no number per se, I will say, to reach, but uh, uh, having a, a nuclease highly efficient will really ease your production, the production of uh, your product candidate. Right, so having a nuclease that uh, have an efficiency of knockout of let's say uh, twenty percent, you you then you will then face quite a, 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 a huge challenge to bring that to the clinic because your yield will be very low at the end. Thank you, Philippe. And unfortunately, this is all the time we have for questions today. But again, as always, feel free to send them to me by email. I'll go through this list as well to see if I missed any, and we'll get back to you directly. And uh, just to say one more time, please join us for tomorrow's episode, which will be very interesting to follow, um, especially looking at what our power in the gene editing space looks like. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing and hearing you tomorrow.